Hi guys, I hope you're all having a great Friday. Um, so right now I'm in my tomato garden and I am trying to address some of my very unruly tomatoes. Um, I keep saying I feel like all I ever get done doing is pruning tomatoes and trellising tomatoes, but it's working out great. So far, all the fruit looks really, really good, even though nothing has um, blushed yet or turned ripe. But uh, if you can see behind me, I don't know if you can see real well. Uh, I have three lines of the Florida Weave, and I will take you guys over and show you a little closer um, how that looks. But I have really great airflow, and everybody's up off the ground. So I'm proud of myself for keeping up with it because the gardening thing is kind of like a one person deal here. But everything looks good so far. And remember I said last year, I dealt with blossom end rot, something fierce. Um, this year so far, I don't see any. So fingers crossed it keeps up that way. Uh, when I put the plants in the ground, um, I did put a handful of Dr. Earth organic fertilizer in there. It's just a generic vegetable fertilizer. And I either put a whole egg or Tums, like your little Tums anti-acid pills, uh, one Tums in each one. So far it is working. I hear some people say that that's not really a thing. Um, but last year I suffered terribly with blossom end rot and this year I don't see any so far. So I'm going to say it's probably a thing. Anyways, something definitely to try in the future and, and see if you have any luck with it. I'm definitely going to do it every year to make sure I get continued success as well. But I have you on here today to talk about tomatoes because I am pruning and I am trellising and thought that I might as well bring you guys along with me because um, this is valuable information and it's been really working well, also weeding. Um, it's been working really, really well for me. So I thought I would share it with you guys. Um, I'll turn you guys around so you can see what we're dealing with. You can see this row of tomatoes has fallen over. Uh, the weight of the plant and the fruits are just pulling it completely over. Uh, I haven't gotten to these rows yet. I'm gonna take you over here and show you these rows. We're gonna step over the peppers. Okay. So you can see uh, this row, everybody's standing upright and you can see that I've pruned and trellised everybody up. Um, I've pretty much been aggressively pruning these plants uh, because I want the airflow underneath them to prevent from any blight issues. And, you know, when I first started pruning like this, I was concerned that it seemed like I was taking far too much off. But you can see that um, the plants are quite happy and very healthy. Also, I want to note that my plan of using the marigolds and the basil in between the tomatoes so far is working out amazing. Uh, I've had a multitude of ladybugs and lightning bugs in here um, and I don't have so far any hornworms that I have found um, and the aphids are at a very minimum so I'm happy about that. Um, but yeah look these are my uh, San Marzanos and I'm not sure what this guy is here. It's striped variety, but I'll show you around a little bit. Show you what I've got. This plant is just massive. It's just huge. I don't know if you can tell, but it's got really good, really good base to it. You get all kinds. Look at this tomato, guys. This one is so cool. This is one of those ones I was talking about before in a faciated blossom. Look at that. It's cat faced and everything. And that that's not blossom and rot. That's just, you know, from the bottoms when these, these tomatoes get super funky. How cool though. This one's actually fused. It's kind of neat. I think these are my Cherokee purples. They have a tendency to do that. Look at this guy. So I can't wait for them to start ripening up. Cinnamon basil here. One of my very favorite plants yeah everybody's doing good um these guys still want to kind of fall down i just come in and try to straighten them up see i broke one of those stems we had a nasty storm come through last night but look there's another fused one they're so cool but yeah everything's looking good so far and then over here this first row 
I'm going to show you my favorite tomatoes. This was a volunteer, by the way, from last year. And I did plant them this year, but this is a volunteer plant. These are the Midnight Snack Cherry Tomatoes. And this will turn red when they're ripe. But these are full of anthocyanins. And they're extremely beneficial for your health. And not to mention, the flavor of this particular cherry tomato is outstanding. And they're just beautiful as well. So glad to have that one. Oh, over here. This one, I gotta show you these tomatoes. These are my uh, speckled Roman. Let me see if I can find one. These are a paste tomato as well. They're not, whoop, they're not blushing yet. I don't know if you can see. Let's go down here. Oh, here, this is better. Looky. I don't know if you can tell, but they're striped. They're really cool. So I can't wait until they ripen and blush. This is a good sized tomato. I'm very happy with the, uh, this strain so far. And I'm looking forward to using it. Look at that. How cool. So I'll keep you guys posted, but yeah, look, not, not a sign of blossom end rot in, in view here. So yeah, everybody's doing real good. So I'm gonna bring you over here. I'm gonna show you how to prune. Okay, so I've already done this one and I, I still need to trellis it yet. But you can see how I've taken a lot of the stems off the bottom. So I'm gonna sit you guys up here so that you can see, or I can at least try to show you what I'm doing. Okay, this guy is completely falling over, but we're gonna fix that. Um, I really hope you can see. See if I can't adjust this a little bit. Sorry if it's wiggly in advance. It's kind of hard to film and prune tomatoes at the same time. Okay, so this is this is a big guy, and you can see where I've pruned him before. Um, all the missing branches, and actually he's pretty good. This might not be the best example, actually. I'm probably going to just take you to another plant because he's pretty good. Although, we'll show you up here. Hang on one second. I like to take the little suckers off in the armpits. So, where's my fingers? See this little guy here? We just pluck that off in the armpit of the plant there. Um, just try to get the suckers off. And if not, I mean, it's not a huge deal. But yeah, we're going to go to the next plant. Maybe I already pruned this one. Whew. Okay, this tomato is a mess. And I actually think I had you guys zoomed in. Um, so this will probably give you a better view. So you see all these branches down here. Try to pull these out of the way. Um, down here these branches okay there's no flowers on them there's no tomatoes on them all they're doing is laying on the ground and being a general pain in the butt now you can see how resilient tomato plants are too because i really ripped the heck out of this one accidentally i think what i did is i was weed eating the um path here and I got it with the weed eater so it's got very little stem but it's still thriving so I want to get this up off the ground and prune to take some of the extra weight off of course all I use is my handy dandy garden knife I won this one at uh you know carnival the little ring toss jig um I love that game just needless information but anyhow I got myself a nice knife from that and we're just going to come in here I hope you can see and I like the serrated part of this blade because it makes cutting these off really easy. And as long as the plant isn't diseased, I go ahead and I leave the branch in the middle because it helps mulch it. And you're just, you know, you're, you're putting the plant that you want to grow is helping to fertilize the soil. So, you know, the beneficial nutrients of that plant are going to help fertilize this soil and kill out some of the weeds. All right. And we're gonna take this guy off here too. And you're gonna see how much happier this plant is when I trellis it up. Okay, now because that one has that severed spot, I might prune it just a wee bit more than I normally would. And I'm gonna take this off. I'm just trying to make this plant as happy as I can. Let me show you what happens if you don't take a sucker off. This is one strong plant. Okay. Look at the size of this. 
So this is actually a sucker, which um, I left and I didn't prune. And it's pretty incredible size. Look at the size of that compared to my hand. So this is what pruning does for your, your tomato plants. What it does is it builds a really strong plant, really strong uh, stem system. And it helps to hold all of these tomatoes up off the ground and it puts all the energy into the tomatoes. So it's going to grow a much healthier, much bigger tomato. I'm gonna take this guy off too. Now, I don't wanna to take too much off, but um, I heard this, I heard a guy on YouTube say it, so I'm going to use his quote. I don't know his name, um, but he said, I'm not trying to grow leaves. I'm trying to grow tomatoes. And yeah, I agree. So here we have it. It's almost like a tree. It's kind of what I'm going for. Now I'm kind of going to kind of lay him off to the side and get his other half because remember earlier in the year, ugh, earlier in the year, um, I, I, uh, topped these plants and what it gave me was a double leader system. So most of these have two stems on the main plant and just like the other one, I'm just going to lop these off. I really don't want much foliage down here, foliage down here at the bottom. I mostly just want a strong stem and nice top of leaves. And yeah, I know it looks a bit unusual, but you can see how happy and strong this plant is. And he's even, ah, come back here, you. He should actually even be taller than he is. Ah, look. So that is a strong, healthy plant. And it does seem like, you know, you're taking a whole lot off, but realistically, you're really not. Oh, here's some suckers here that can go. There. You're just helping create a very healthy growing environment for your plants so that they can produce you the optimum fruit, the best of their ability. And let's just admire these marigolds for a second because they're beautiful and useful. Okay, I'm going to get this row done and then I'm going to pick this back up when I start to um, do the Florida weave so you guys can see how that is because these guys need it desperately. Okay, guys. I am going to try to get this row done before the storm comes. Um, anyways, so I have Cecil Twine, and I've said before, it's not the greatest, but it's what I have, so this is what I'm using. It does like to get tangled up, and you know, I just leave it out here all the time, so my fault. <laughs> anyways, so I hope, I hope I talk loud enough that you all can hear me. I really should invest in a mic, but we're not there yet, so. Okay, so we're just going to tie this off at a height that is approximately near the top of the tomato plant. And these are all going to be about the same height, so we're going to tie that off there. Just um, a double square knot is fine. And then we're going to go, here's the plant. So we'll go in the front of this one and in the back of this one. Now the first half isn't as important as the second one. And we're just going to go like this. Lifting up our tomatoes and tucking the twine in. As close to the top as you can get it. Now you see they're already starting to stand up and it's not perfect. When you get to this T-post, you're gonna pull it as tight as you can and twist it around. I'm gonna put you on a time lapse so I can get it done quick. Really quickly, I, I stopped the time lapse because I wanted to show you. Do you see this plant? Do you see, see anything suspicious about this plant? That, my friends, is a hornworm. And that will do all kinds of damage to your plants. See, he's eating leaves and stuff off of here. Now, I made the mistake of not planting marigolds and stuff in with the peppers. And I can see that I'm going to actually have to do that. This is why it's important to go to your garden and put your hands on stuff as often as possible. So, with this little guy, he's got to go. He's got to go. And I will tell you right now, 
Come on. I'm off there. Ah. Hold on. If you step on these guys, they splatter everywhere. But you got to get rid of them. Hold on, I'll put you down. The benefits of chickens. They sure do love to eat them things. guys so they're all trellised now you can see how happy they are um, I try to bring as much of the leaves up above the twine as possible but do you see how much airflow they have now being pruned like they are um, yeah the tomatoes have lots of room to grow and it's really easy access to them now they're just going to keep going up and up and up until they're up to the top of those T-posts and even higher. And look, I knocked this poor little guy off. That's a bummer. Sometimes that happens. <sighs> Always weeding. So one thing I've noticed is that where I do have the marigolds planted in with the tomatoes, I don't have the pest issues. I'm going to have to keep an eye on my pepper plants, I guess. Um, but yeah, anyways, kind of went down a squirrel hole there. These kind of, oh, nope, there is one. I just grabbed them. Oh, look at that little turd. Ah, uh, scared the snot out of me. Look, I was just here pruning too. Get my trusty knife out. So there you go. The marigolds help a little bit, but not a lot of it. Come on, you. Off. No, you got to go. There he is. I'll get him on here. Chick, 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 chick. It's the circle of life. Here. Yeah. You love that, don't you? Oh, yeah. See, guys? Number one, that's why I love chickens. They will eat all of the pests. Number two, this is why you have to put your hands on your plants as often as possible. I just saw something else, look. Do you see them here? June bug. Those are pests too, and chickens love them. So I'll probably, what I'll do is probably get like a June bug uh, trap, June beetle, Japanese beetle. I don't, those aren't June bugs, those are Japanese beetles. Probably get a Japanese beetle trap. I think you can make them out of milk jugs. Uh, don't quote me on that. Um, but I'll probably get some traps and then feed them to my chickens as well because they love those suckers. I will be out here. I'm going to have to get a black light. You can look for hornworms. I better put my knife away before I cut myself. You can uh, look for hornworms in your garden at night when it's dark with a black light and they will glow. So I'll be doing that tonight since I just got two of them. But you know I'm going to be out here. I just got two hornworms. Fed them to the chickens. One was on my my super Thai peppers, and one was right here. I was pruning this plant. I just grabbed it. Yeah. Ask Carly what happened last year when we got one of those uh, hornworms. No. Yeah. No. What happened, Harley? No. What happened? No. I stepped on it, and the, the slime it flew Good. up, and I think it hit her in the lip. No. No. It hit me in the leg. Oh, in the leg. Oh well. It happens. That's why I was feeding it to the chickens. I was hoping I got it off the plant without squishing it. Ooh, they, that It's like toothpaste. It's just like if you ever stepped on a thing of toothpaste and it just flies. Yeah, but worse. Anyways, we will be checking this garden later um, for more hornworms with black lights. The Japanese beetle traps, we'll have to get those too. Um, the nice thing, like I said, about having chickens is they eat those things. So as long as, you know, the Japanese beetle trap is non-toxic or whatever, you know, it's just a natural thing. They fly in, they get stuck, they can't get back out. You can wait till they die and give them to the birds. It's extra protein. They love it. 
uh, chickens really are the greatest greatest asset to a small farm uh, actually I should show them the back garden so the back garden is my squash bed and as I called it before that was my cannot fail squash garden and it is it's living up to its name I, I haven't failed this year I actually got some squash coming so I'm pretty happy about that but I didn't fence it so that the chickens could not get in um, so they're actually going in but the cool thing is they're not hurting my plants in that particular garden because if I put them in the tomato garden they would peck my tomatoes peck my peppers they would ruin things but back there in the squash garden they're not messing with the plants but what they're doing is they're scratching in the rows and they're picking the, the there's they're scratching in the rows and they're digging up the vine borer beetles and they're also picking the cucumber beetles off the plants so it's a it's a beautiful relationship this was very much a experiment this year that that squash garden and i i'm i'm super thrilled with it it's weedy but you know what the squash plants are thriving i did lose some because of the drought but all in all you know it's working out fantastic with the chickens and turkeys going back there and uh yeah i mean i had to eliminate a few I had to eliminate a few rabbits, and I'd still like to eliminate the groundhog, Calendula. It's one of our favorites, Calendula. Look at this wild, lovely patch of it. All volunteers. I didn't plant a single plant here this year, and they're fabulous. Put them, put a, uh, flower petals and a little bit of olive oil, and let them soak for about four weeks, and uh, you'll have a lovely salve that you can use for any type of skin irritation. It's really good for you. Anyways, I kind of went down a rabbit hole here. Thank you. I kind of went down a rabbit hole here at the end of this video. Um, the hornworms kind of threw me off. Uh, yeah, if you have any questions about this Florida weave system, it's really fantastic. You know, you just have to go through and straighten things up. Hmm? Oh yeah, it's going to rain. Anyways, uh, yeah, this is, it's a fabulous system. It keeps everything up and if you prune them well, it, it keeps, you know, no blight issues. And by heavily pruning like we do, it makes it a lot easier to see those nasty hornworms. What did you do? I knocked it off. Don't shame me. I already told them about it. She's shaming me. Okay guys, I'm gonna get off here. It's about to rain. I have my booth set up and I'm gonna go hunting for hornworms. We will talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.